All right, hi, I'm Rich Folley. We are at the Miami Book Fair 2015, and I am sitting on the set right now with a number of cartoonists and uh, Bill Cardalopoulos. Did I get that right? That's right. Okay, the series editor for Best American Comics 2015, and a number of the artists appear inside. I'm going to go through this uh, again, if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to go Julia Gaffer. I got it. Anders Nielsen and Gabrielle Bell. Yes. All of whom have comics inside. I'm going to start with you, though. Sure. Um, you've been. You told me this is your second uh, time editing this series. You also have Jonathan Lethem, who is your guest editor. Tell me how that whole process works. Sure. Um, the Best American Comics works in much the same way as all the Best American titles, like Best American Short Stories, Best American Essays. And there's a series editor who works on the book for multiple volumes, collaborating each year with a special guest editor. So my job is, first of all, to receive I can't tell you how many submissions every year. Yeah. Like I get a package, a package full yeah. of comics and graphic novels at least once a week uh, arriving at my doorstep. And then on top of that, I keep my radar up. I go to comics festivals. I go to the comic book store. I talk to trusted friends. And I try and accumulate all of the best comics of the year in my uh, small Brooklyn apartment. And then I read these 1,000 plus comics. I narrow it down to a pre-selection of about 120 or so pieces, and then I send those over to the guest editor I'm collaborating with each year, in this case, Jonathan Lethem. And then Jonathan read through that material, I think did a little detective work on his own, and then boiled it all down to a selection of about 35 pieces that we republished in the Best American Comics 2015. Yeah, if there's one thing that's abundantly clear as you go through this collection of comics, is how varied the styles are. There is no single style. I don't even know if like comics is, is a word that works, but there's something about this that um, I don't know if there's a single word that can describe the different variations on the art form here. Um, so when you go to pick 35 or 135, you're dealing with so many unique styles. There's not like a single, you don't have like a book club kind of book, and this is narrative nonfiction, and this, this is all unique components. How do you find the ability to narrow it down at all? Uh, it's hard to narrow it down, and I think that speaks to the vibrancy of the comics field right now. Best American Comics is kind of interesting compared to those other titles, because Best American Short Stories has a kind of uh, specific mission to it. Comics is a wide open field. We're looking at comic strips on the web, graphic novels, self-published zines, uh, silkscreen printed books, even stuff that hung on gallery walls like the work of Raymond Pettibone that's also in the book. And a big part of what we want to do is demonstrate that diversity and vibrancy. So we're looking for outstanding works that also indicate the exciting breadth of the field right now. Yeah, well, we're sitting with a number of the artists that appear inside. Julia, you, you're, uh, the comic that of yours that appears in here is called Palm Ash. Mm -hmm. And it's very heavy. I mean, it's like when you look at it, it was like, um, you know, I, I was blown away by the art form, obviously, and by the art. But it's a heavy Thank story you. too. Um, yeah, I've been told it's my uh, my bleakest work to date. <laughs> There's something. So tell me, when you were putting it together, um, and do you, do you feel like you have a style that's your own? Like when you look at it, do people say there's a Julia Gaffer right there? Yeah, I think that uh, my drawing style is pretty locked in, it hasn't varied a lot. I've been making comics not really that long, maybe like six years. Uh, and I think that, that it's a pretty consistent style throughout and also a, a narrative style that's simultaneously kind of uh, romantic and grim. <laughs> yeah, so tell me, I mean, I'm not saying yes, it's grim, but I think there is no, certainly is. a darkness <laughs> to some of your comics. So when you, the, but there is something too that's special about the artist community within comics right now. You go to some of the comic shows, or whether some of the, there's a there's a camaraderie and a respect for what everyone's doing, regardless of how different your styles may be. You look at it and go, wow! And it's like there's such a special thing in this community. It seems tighter, in some ways, than maybe some of the parts of the literature community. Would you all agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, when you decide to dedicate your career life to comics, you have to make a lot of sacrifices. You're never going to make money. You're probably not going to get super famous and there's a there's a fraternity to that like that we all have these similar struggles that we've all made these similar sacrifices for this art form that's important to us mm -hmm. so where does your um, Anders for you for you your, your piece is called Prometheus in here where does your artwork appear when you when you put together your comics I mean where are you sharing your your comics where are you sending them to who's seeing your stuff um, most of what I do is books, so I'm doing, you know, graphic novels, long form, storytelling, um, that comes out as a single volume that's just my work. 
But there are a number of different anthologies out there too that are, um, you know, doing a little bit the same sort of thing that Best American is doing, um, maybe with a slightly different focus. Um, but but that's part of that community of, uh, you know, people who are really enthusiastic about the form and are trying to share it with uh, and expand the audience. How has it changed for you? How first of all, how long have you been in the comics world? I guess I got sort of serious about it in like 2000, so 15 years, which is crazy. So did you find yourself within that community suddenly? Did you know where you'd go or were people just starting to share your stuff? Or how do you suddenly find yourself in the community? Um, it felt sort of magical. I mean, I just, I sort of was thinking of myself more as a painter or an installation artist, but I was, and I was doing these comics on the side. Um, made a little photocopied booklet and sent to some friends or gave to uh, you know, the guy that ran the comic shop in Minneapolis, where I'm from. Um, and at that time, you know, this is sort of pre-internet, but it was like, there was this inherent sharing culture of like where you would send, you'd make your little booklet and you'd send it to your favorite artist and like they would actually write you back and maybe they would send you their thing. Um, there was, it was very supportive and very encouraging uh, culture and milieu, and I think you know that still is part of what what happens in comics. Been in for fifteen years, um, you've seen changes in this business. I mean, there was a time when uh, it was much less smaller and, and accepted and out in the world. This is the tenth year of this, but fifteen years in the business. How what changes have you seen as a cartoonist? Um, what changes have I seen? I don't know. I mean, it does seem like. Uh, there is a little bit more acceptance of it and acknowledgement of it um, in the mainstream culture, um, which is great. I think there's still plenty of room for it to grow. Um, you know, you go to France or you go to Japan and it's like even more sort of a, a part of the culture, the way movies are, or the way novels are, or whatever. Um, uh, so I think, you know, there's room to, to continue to grow, but it's definitely doing well. You know? Yeah, it does seem to be. Gabrielle, yours, your, your comic's called The Columbia Diaries. Yes. What did it mean when, you're, when you were selected for the book? What did it, I mean, it, yours is an excerpt. It's clearly a longer narrative. Yes. But what did it, when you got that call that you were going to be part of this book, what did that mean to you? Well, I was very happy. I was especially happy because Jonathan left them, chose me. That made me, I'm a fan of his work. And, um, and I'm a fan of the way he made the book too, the, the way he chose all the work. And he did a little comic at the beginning, which is great. I'm fascinated with, the idea, um, with the, uh, those who are drawn to this, because to your point, this is a tough business. Mm. You're going to be struggling, you're going to be working to find your audience, you're going to be around amazing people, mm. but you, you, you know, your art has to find an audience you're going to be working in, like any artist. But your stories are unique in that you're telling, it's a little autobiographical, I mean you're bringing mm. some of yourself into it obviously. Tell us about how you decided that you're voice wanted to kind of come to life like that when you started to look within to see that story. Yes, it's very autobiographical. I started trying to do fictional comics and it's a real struggle to try to bring imaginary characters together in an imaginary place and I kind of gave up on that and started telling my own story and that sort of took a life on its own and um, I've been doing that for several years and I kind of made a name for myself that way and uh, now I sort of make my autobiographical comics a bit fictional. I um, make up things that for myself. Yeah, you get to add elements into your life which is fun. Um, f start with Bill, but the, um, and this is a question that sort of anybody can take, but you, you write that comics are still kind of considered an alien art form and that you, you don't think necessarily that it's unusual or bad, that it doesn't necessarily sort of fall into line with traditional literary forms, um, and then in fact that it's good for the, the, this thing as it grows. Tell me what you meant by that in your forward and, and what you think is happening to the world of comics. Sure, well I think it's an incredible thing to have comics included in something like the Miami Book Fair. Everyone who's here is interested in books and comics are books. Um, but I think one of the things that we've seen over the last 15 years as comics have become more and more a part of the publishing industry is that you know the publishing industry has its structures, it has its audiences, it has its markets, it has its ways of publicizing material. And there is a danger whenever um, 
uh, a previously marginal art form enters into any kind of structure, that it might be domesticated, essentially. Yeah. That it'll lose a little bit of its wild quality. That um, work, that comics work that conforms a little bit more towards literary narrative convention or, or popular genres uh, might have a better chance of succeeding in the world because that structure is better equipped uh, to put that kind of work forward. Right. So what I, the point that I was trying to make in there, which I think was um, somewhat timely in that we do have work by people uh, like Raymond uh, Pettibone in this year's volume, is that there's this whole other side to comics that has to do with you know, visual art and form and structure that doesn't have anything to do with language. And comics bring all of that together. And they're always going to have qualities that aren't necessarily going to be easily assimilable yeah. into literary culture per se. Uh, which is not to say that comics should resist participating in that culture. But I think I just wanted to make the point that um, you know, uh, th there are some qualities of comics that maybe resist that kind of domestication. Yeah, well, I'm being told that it's time to wrap up, but I, I saw you nodding, Julia, when we were talking about the you You're like, what, me? No, don't go. <laughs> when you talk about domestic, the domesticated idea, um, and that it seems like as comics are bigger and bigger, there's going to be sort of offshoots that continue to be really successful. And, and do you think there's a danger of it ever becoming too generic or too normal or too everyday? Well, I think uh, as those kind of comics that you were describing that are, get popular more easily, like the more mainstream they become, the more that people will think that's what comics are supposed to look like and that's what they'll expect to see. So you'll see more and more of that. And you know, a book like this is collecting such disparate aesthetics that uh, right now there's this wild west of nobody's sure what a comic can be or should be. And that's a really exciting uh, place to be right now. Yeah, I would agree. It's an amazing book. It's a really cool collection. I, I love the different styles and congratulations to the three of you for being selected and Thank Bill you. for putting it together and Thank Jonathan you. Leatham for his awesome work doing it too. Yes. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on PBS today too. It's Thank really great to be here. Thank you.